What up? Adrian FedQ, phillyinfluencer.com. Adrian FedQ from the Bitter Birds. Now, in case you haven't been watching all of my reaction videos, I'm going to sum up the draft uh, right now. And I'll tell you what, man. Philadelphia killed this draft all the way around. First of all, the city, the fans, they came out in droves to the Benjamin Franklin Parkway. It was amazing on Thursday night. The aesthetics. I mean, the atmosphere was unbelievable. When, when the Eagles picked, even though, even though it was like, you know, it, it, it wasn't like hugely cheered. There, there were a couple, you know, scattered boos, I guess. But uh, it was a freaking unbelievable time this week here in Philadelphia. Uh, I'm, I'm at Temple University right now, my, my old stomping grounds. Check out this beautiful campus. They're making a lot of renovations here. A lot of new things here. It's incredible. Anyway, so Philadelphia killed the draft. It better come back next year. It was amazing. But for this draft, Joe Douglas's impact has been unbelievably substantial. The Eagles killed this draft. We'll see what happens on paper. Because on paper, they filled their needs. They filled holes on the roster. They got their cornerbacks. A lot of depth at cornerback in this class, and they got a pair of them. Uh, they got some value there at, in the first round, Derek Barnett. You basically got two top 15 talents in Sidney Jones and Derek Barnett. Sidney Jones was the number two cornerback in the draft before his Achilles injury. Oh, wind's going a little bit. You got Rasul Douglas watching his tape, man. He's physical. He presses you. If, if he gets his hands on you within the first five yards, he won the play. It's as simple as that. Russell Douglas, I, 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 there's, there's some talent there. He's got ball skills. I, what I found most incredible about Russell Douglas, there were probably about three, four, five occasions that I saw this, where somebody would run a click slant or a crossing route, and he'd be beat. He'd be beat by a couple steps. But the way Douglas can close on the ball and strip it away with his strong hands, he just has a knack for this. Now, sometimes you'll see these corners, you know, you get a little lucky. You see it maybe once or twice a season. But Rasul Douglas does this on a consistent basis, and it's very, very impressive. Uh, he can't tackle. He's not a great tackler yet, but, you know, that's something that you'll learn at the next level. You know, Gary on Conley can't really tackle either. Uh, so I, I, I like the prospect of both of these cornerbacks. Um, I, it, it, they could be your cornerbacks of the future. They could be your two starters. This could be like the draft where uh, the Eagles, they took Lito Shepard and Sheldon Brown. Those were your two cornerbacks for the next, what, five years? Whatever it was. Sheldon Brown was a very good player for a very long time. Very underrated player here in Philadelphia. People uh, don't, I don't think people remember just how good Sheldon Brown was. Uh, but both these cornerbacks, man, there's some talent here. Like, you, you really look at what the, the value the Eagles got within the first three rounds. You could make the argument that Rasul Douglas is a, is a second round talent, but he fell to the third round because there were so many great cornerbacks in this class. He just happened to fall. He just happened to be the guy. So you got basically two top 15 talents and a second round pick within the first three picks. Unbelievable. The Derek Barnett pick looks a lot better now when you mix it up with everything else because you got the safe thing. You, you know that Derek Barnett's gonna produce. You know that he's going to get get you about eight to ten sacks a season. Uh, he's going to have to improve his run defense at the next level. Um, but you know, quick first step. He's smart. He gets he, he gets flagged a lot because he does try to jump the snap count. And uh, you know, a lot you're going to see a lot of offsides penalties with him. So that might piss people off. But uh, quick first step. He can bend the edge. Uh, he can bull rush you. Uh, but in terms of stopping the run, where he struggles, he's not really athletic. Uh, his hips are kind of stiff, so if you get him one-on-one -on, -one on like an outside zone and you get him in space, he's, you're not going to be able. To, he's not going to be able to tackle a running back. So that's that's my thing with Derek Barnett. Um, yeah. So yeah, we killed this draft. All right, let's the other picks. Danell Pumphrey. Now I thought there were better running backs on the board, but in terms of what he's going to be, I understand why they made the pick. Danelle Pumphrey is going to be re replacing Darren Sproles when he retires. Um, now, the thing about Pumphrey is he's only 175 pounds. He's only 5'8", not very big, but um, so he doesn't have, like, 
because like Darren Sproles is a bowling ball. He's very hard to bring down. He's he's very, uh, yeah. His his his, his lower body. He's got a lot of strength there, and that's how he breaks tackles. And Donnell Pumphrey isn't going to break tackles. Donnell Pumphrey is just basically going to run by you because he's he's really quick turning the corner, and uh, where he's going to be at his best, you, you're, he's going to get you jet you know jet sweeps. Um, he's going to run some. Screen plays, maybe line him up in the slot, run some option routes. He's going to play the Darren Sproles role. Uh, outside zones where he's going to be best. You know, turn that corner, bounce it to the outside. That's what Donnell Pumphrey does. Um, other picks: Matt Collins, Shelton Gibson. Basically, what you're looking at there, you got you got a pair of wide receivers, a pair of guys that are going to stretch the field. So you're hoping that. God damn, that's loud as hell. So you're, you're hoping that Gibson or Hollins, one of the two, emerges in a couple years and becomes your deep threat. Obviously, the Eagles, they need a deep threat here. They need a, they need a guy that can stretch the field. Uh, Torrey Smith isn't going to be here forever. So so somebody is going to hopefully fill the role that Josh Huff was supposed to fill a couple years ago, and he never panned out. Josh Huff was supposed to be the deep guy. So that didn't really happen. Um, but out, out of the two, I think, I think Gibson's got more potential. Uh, big play guy at the college level. I believe he was third in yards per catch. Twenty it was like 22.3 or something. So he's a big play guy. He drops the ball a lot. So we're not going to like that very much. Um, but he's going to run go routes and he's going to run by you. That, that's what he does. So uh, yeah. Other than that, man, this was a great draft. And they killed this draft. They freaking killed this draft. I get the last great, like the last really good draft that they had was 2012. That was the year that they got uh, Fletcher Cox, uh, Nick Foles. They got actually that draft actually doesn't look as great now, like you know in retrospect, uh, because Michael Kendricks has fallen off. Brandon Boykin's not even in the league anymore. Uh, Nick Foles isn't throwing 27 touchdowns and two interceptions anymore. Uh, he was what? He was the fourth round pick. Boykin was the, or was it Logan was the third round pick? Actually, it might have been Benny Logan. Uh, you had Fletcher Cox, and in the second round, you had Michael Kendricks. So, on paper, it was a very good draft. We'll see if these prospects pan out, but the way that they went after it, Joe Douglas's hiring was awesome, and it's helping out. And e even the trades that Howie made, you know, like uh, acquiring that extra pick, because I, I think what they wanted to do there in the, in the fourth round, or was it the fifth? Actually, the fifth round, right? Yeah, they, they traded back twice. And I think what happened, what they wanted to do, you had to run a cornerbacks go. You had Casey go, Desmond King, and Corn Elder right before the Eagles picked. And I think they wanted one of those cornerbacks, and that's why they traded back. And they wound up getting uh, Gibson, I believe. Right? So, all right, that's it. Adrian Fecu, uh, BillyInfluencer.com, Bitter Birds. Go watch all my videos. It's legit. So, we're out. I'm sure Sean Brace and I are going to do a podcast at some point next week. Uh, so tune in for that, and that's it. So, later.